Hello and welcome. We are down in Columpton in Devon, um, which is down the M5, but quite close to Exeter and that sort of area. Yep, not far. Yeah. And we are at the site of David Knight's place. Now, David uh, runs Knight Detailing. Yep, that's right. And uh, we are joined also by Owen Quick. Hello. And he runs something called Mad About Detailing. And you guys are based about 20 minutes drive from each other. That's right. Yeah. Um, and the scenario we've had, we, as you might have noticed, have got this rather nice BMW M4. Don't look at it too closely yet. Um, and um, we've got a bit of a mission on our hands. Tell us what's happened. So, uh, my customer lives down in Surrey. He wants me to detail his car, but only has limited time in Devon. So he wanted me to basically get as much done as possible in a day. So that's why I've teamed up with Owen, so that we can do a two-stage polish, followed by ceramic coatings, all in one day. That's cool. So the idea here is, again, is, is teamwork allows you to do sort of achieve more in the time available. Yeah, absolutely. I could never get this done in one day or my own otherwise. Absolutely. I mean, we generally say you can do a light enhancement in a day, possibly, but since you're adding in coatings for a second stage, it's just not feasible. One person, one day, one car, it's, it's going to be too difficult to do properly. Um, and so the mission with this, is saying, you were saying, is a two-stage polish. Yeah. Um, now, what's interesting is we've been um, talking about compounds quite a lot, and the compound you're using in this is an IGL compound. Yeah. Now, um, Owen, you normally use, you were saying, Cochimi H8? Yes, and Carpro Fast Cut. And you like those compounds? You get yeah. one of those? And yeah. what, what machine are you using? DA or Rotary or both? DA, my Rupes. DA, my Rupes, most of the time. Yeah. yeah. And you've just had a first one, I've been watching you guys do a polish, as you'll see from some of the cutscenes, we've already been, been at it. Oh, David's been here since five in the morning, or something ridiculous. Yeah, I met my customer at quarter past five, half past five this morning, and um, yeah, so we had all the prep and cleaning and decom done by a bit before nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, which is the night end okay, yeah. part time. Um, and so, uh, one thing with the compounds though, is that you, uh, we've been using the IGL compound, yeah. um, and you've been showing Owen how to use it. What's interesting is the machine movement speed, I mean, how fast you move the machine over the paint, it seems to be much quicker than what I've seen other compounds being used with. Yeah, it's, it, it works in a completely different way, um, and by using high speed passes, it, um, it doesn't generate the same heat, which means a compound which takes a bit longer to break down um, is able to do its job properly. At normal polishing speeds it's it just dries up too quickly and doesn't, doesn't do its job properly. That's interesting. So normally you would think moving quicker is going to make more heat. It's just sort of a human thing but actually it's the yeah. opposite is true because you're spreading your time over a larger area yeah. rather than moving slowly and focusing on an area in which case the, the polishing action has uh, more time to build heat within the within the metal and the paintwork and all the rest of it. So and, and you've been putting this to practice and we've got some 50-50s so we'll flash on the screen. Um, they're looking pretty good. What, what's your opinion of it? First, first glimpse. Uh, the technique is totally Irish to me. Yeah. I can't get my head around that. But obviously now that I've done um, a few panels, um, yeah, I'm quite impressed. I'm loving the fact that there is absolutely minimal dust. Yes. The problem with um, the HA and the Carpo and a lot of these other compounds, the dust create is unreal. Yes. This, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. And there seems to be very little filler as well. So when you panel wipe it afterwards, it basically looks exactly the same as when you finished polishing set. So the results you initially see are actually what you get rather than you wipe it and ah, there's all this stuff back again. And you're using the IGL, is it Delete or is that the panel wipe or what's the name of um, the It's um, the, yes, good question. It's <laughs> called, I don't know. Okay, it's so, it is, so it's the IGL panel wipe that you're using because um, obviously yes. lots of other different manufacturers do it. Yeah, it's the thing. Gotcha. And does it smell, I mean, um, people often think IPA and panel wipe is the same, they're not. Um, quite often panel wipes are based on IPA, but normally there are other solvents in there as well to pull out different things, because IPA will pull out certain things. Um, I, I can't remember whether it's the oils that pulls out or it doesn't, but ultimately a proper panel wipe has different solvents in to allow a multitude of things to be removed. Um, and the point of panel wiping is, when you're polishing you've got oils, some will have kind of what we call fillers, but they are just the nature of the product, the lubricating oils and stuff like that, um, which will fill swirls and marks on the paint, and you think, wow, the paint's brilliant, I've, I've mission yeah. success, tools down, time, time for home and tea and medals, um, but then actually, you know, a week or two later, everything comes out and you realise, no, this isn't working, um, and that's why you wipe, so you remove any excess there so you can see the true condition of the paintwork that you're working on. Yeah. But anyway, we have blabbered on enough, um, I need to leave you guys to do it, and I will just do some strange operations from the shadows, taking photos of you, if that's alright. Great. Cool. <laughs> See you in a minute. We have 
been working on this M4, well I say we, I mean these two have been working on this M4 which isn't a competition, it turns out, I thought it was, um, and it was fascinating watching you guys work. We've got the new, well not the new, but the new to me certainly, is the new compound from IGL. Yep. Um, now you were using F3, were you, for the main cutting? Uh, we used F1 compound for the cutting, okay. and then we'll be the final with, with F3, which is the finishing operation. And um, is there an F2? Or is there? there is, yeah, which is the kind of best of both worlds. It's got cut and great dots for, for finishing. Gotcha. So if you're only doing a single stage, I'm guessing F2, you know, you're going to basically, I'm not going to be able to get the deepest swirls out, but I'll be able to get it to a nice level without needing to refine. You can, yeah, although with this high speed technique, you still get quite a good finish with the F1 as well. So yeah. it's, um, you can kind of, dep depends a lot on what the paint type is, you can get great results. Have you found this BMW paint to be quite hard, soft, or? Uh, quite hard, yeah, yeah, so it's quite hard. It's um, really heavily marked. There's yes. been lots of scratches, lots of spells. Um, and so really, we definitely needed the cutting compound and we've been able to get rid of a vast majority of the marks doing it, so it's... Um, yeah, it's I have to admit, we'll, we'll, we'll fly some 50-50s some on there, but the difference is amazing. And one real thing I noticed was the clarity of the metallic fleck came up. Yes. So it really starts popping now. And I have to Absolutely. admit, I'm yeah. quietly in love with this colour. I thought it was a bit boring, but no, it's quite nice. Speaking of love, though, um, I didn't realise um, Owen here has got a Roots LH... Is it an LHR 75? I think it might be. It's, yes, it's a, it's, a, yes. it's a smaller machine than the conventional LHR15. Yeah. It's a 75E. Um, but these things, how much power does that put out? 400 watts. And so 400 watts, and the bigger ones only put out 500. And bear in mind how much smaller you've got, what, three inch space there. And so you've got all that kind of torque and power in there. And you're saying you, you absolutely adore this machine. Yeah, compared to the, um, the other models and other machines that are on the market this yeah that really floated your boat yeah and this beamer although it looks fairly conventional actually there's been lots of interesting little surfaces so for example in the wing here it's got some concave areas and particularly a little vent there which has necessitated a uh, smaller throw d8 or a rotor you can use and, and obviously ivory nano and stuff like that yeah um, but also on the roof it's got the carbon roof bear in mind the carbon is lacquered so it is essentially a similar material to what's on the rest of the car yeah. um, but then you've got a piano black strip of plastic then you've got paint and then you've got another piano black strip, both of which have been horribly marred in the car. Um, so actually getting all these intricate areas, Owen's been going around doing those, and, and they've been coming out really, really nicely, but you can see how you do need lots of different tools yeah. in order to do the different surfaces. You know, And it's like with people with, say, 21 throw DAs, there are a lot of people who get one, try one and say, oh, what's the point of this? Well, actually, if you start doing panel bands or you start doing lots of large, flat areas, they make life much, much easier. So it's about picking the pad, well, about the tool for the job as well as the pad and the compound and all the rest of it. Yeah. Anyhow, um, our next step is to be coating this, isn't it? That's right, yeah. yeah so we're going to be coating the paint with uh, IGL poly. Yeah. Then we will be doing also the wheels and the glass for the portion of the IGL coatings. Cool, and we've got some nice little boxes lined up of those, so we have yeah. kind of going to read through those. It's all interesting. Um, and the poly, we said it's a one year coating earlier. Uh, That's right. Um, and what's interesting about it is a lot of ceramic coatings you need to leave overnight, you need to have quite specific conditions. But by the sound of it, um, what's the process with poly? Uh, well, it's a little bit more forgiving. So um, after the initial application, um, you leave it for two hours. Then there's a top-up sealant which protects it while the coating is curing fully over the next five days or so. Um, but it does mean that it can come out in the weather when it's it's all right to be used. Which is makes it much easier. Yeah, on the, particularly on the on the one-day details and those. You know, you, quite often you can't take something to put right. You're not allowed to use the car for the next three days. That would be really inconvenient. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing the after photos. I unfortunately have to zip off to a, to a training day tomorrow. At the other side in East Anglia of the country, so um, I'll leave you to it and you're going to send us some nice after photos and stuff like that, yeah. which we shall grace across the screen shortly. But that's just to say thank you very much, Owen. It's been a pleasure, as ever, and to you, David, as well. Thanks, thank you for inviting us along, and I'm sure we will be doing another film soon. Thank you. Thanks.